Mattis is an interesting choice, especially given he is, is not a civilian candidate. He's been very recently in combat. He's a decorated veteran. Uh, but what does that mean for his views on cybersecurity, technological warfare on the ground? Well, uh, so General Mattis has a, a terrific reputation as an intellectual. Uh, he's strategic. He has advocated force only when necessary and only when it would be successful. Uh, so I think he stands out as a competent pick among Trump's cabinet. Uh, the question is really not about him in particular, but why it is that Donald Trump would say that he's looking to the Defense Department and the Joint Chiefs of Staff for this plan to protect the vital infrastructure against cyber attacks. Uh, looking to the Defense Department, to General Mattis uh, or, or the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to protect our industrial control systems, our dams, our water treatment facilities, our nuclear reactors, uh, you know, that's like, uh, uh, it's just not the right solution. Calling in the Marines to stop malware is like trying to stop a termite infestation with a shotgun. So, so what does it mean for an organization like the NSA? Do you expect the NSA to now focus more on threats from Russia or threats from within the United States? So the NSA's mandate has always been to monitor threats from external enemies. Uh, what's scary is that President-elect Trump, he doesn't see Russia as an, an enemy as much as he sees enemies lurking in the American homeland. Uh, jihadist refugees or illegal aliens or obstructive protesters or conspiring journalists. Um, the concern is that he's going or to- Or anybody on SNL. <laughs> or, or, or Alec Baldwin. Uh, so, so the concern is, is he going to redirect that those cyber capabilities against the American population, um, and you know, given who his advisors are, Rudy Giuliani, who proposes stop and frisk on the streets of America, why not stop and frisk in cyberspace? Jeff Sessions, Attorney General, Peter Thiel, uh, a Silicon Valley billionaire, whose main position is in the company he co-founded, Palantir, that actually makes the software that spy agencies use to monitor large populations. Um, what's going to stop the NSA? Uh, which is part of the Defense Department, from turning its sights on Americans. And so uh, the concern I have is whether, is whether uh, General Mattis uh, will hopefully stop that kind, of, uh, that kind of use of the NSA, but there are other spy agencies in the, in the government that, that don't report up to him. Now, General Mattis has a very interesting Silicon Valley connection in that he is on the board of the very controversial blood testing company, Theranos, and as far as we can tell, he is still on the board as of today. He, he would have to step down if he becomes Secretary of Defense. Uh, and he also, as we understand it, tried to get the military to use Theranos technology unsuccessfully. What do you make of this? Well, I, I'm sure that General Mattis had no idea that the tests didn't work. Um, but I hopefully what he learned from that is that it's a good thing that we have the FDA to set the rules and to, and to uh, apply scrutiny. As to, what it, as to what it is that companies are going to sell to the public. Um, when, you, when we talk about cybersecurity, this is an area where we actually need those rules. We need these regulatory agencies like the FTC and the CFPB and the FCC and the SEC and the CMS for Healthcare and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Um, these agencies are all trying to identify, promote, and enforce cyber standards among companies and among government agencies in order to make cyberspace safer for everybody. Um, I'm hoping that General Mattis will, uh, will, be, will pay more attention to the value that these agencies bring than Theranos has to the FDA.